Well, good morning, everyone. Pastor Zach here. First thing I want to say is that I hope you all had a Merry Christmas. I hope that you are spending time with your family and enjoying them uh, and and being thankful for all the presents that you've gotten uh, and remembering um, that the ultimate present of Christmas was Jesus being born. Um, So before we jump in this morning, why don't we open with a word of prayer? Lord, I come to you now. I thank you for this Christmas season. Lord, I thank you for the true meaning, the true gift of Christmas, your son Jesus being born. Lord, I pray that as we um, are finishing out the Christmas season and preparing for a new year, Lord, that we would um, take time to remember uh, all that you've done for us, take time to say thank you for all you've done for us. Lord, we love you so much. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So as I was saying, uh, I hope you all had a great Christmas. I am actually leaving in just a couple of hours to fly to Missouri to visit my family and friends for Christmas. I'm super excited about that. Um, So praying for safe travel and a wonderful trip home to see my family. Um, As we've been talking the last few weeks, and before we jump into our Bible story, Go ahead and turn your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1. And you know that's where our key verses come from for this unit. But go ahead and turn there because that's where we're going to be reading from today. Before we get there, we talked about all the things that over the past month, we've talked about all the different things that firefighters have to do. They have to have perseverance. They have to know how to handle different tasks. They have a, a code of ethics which is something that firefighters, when they sign up to be a firefighter, something they agree that they're going to do. Did you know that Jesus has a code of ethics for how he wants us to live our lives? And that code of ethics is right here in this book. And so what I want to start with this morning, sorry I grabbed the wrong paper, Uh, is our big picture question, which is, how does the Holy Spirit help Christians? And the answer, the Holy Spirit comforts us, shows us our sin, and guides us as we live for God's glory. We saw how the Holy Spirit comforts us as he comforted the early church when they were in persecution. He shows us our sin as he convicted the people at Pentecost. Today, we will see how the Holy Spirit guides us as we live for God's glory. So, Peter, as you guys know, one of the apostles, he actually wrote letters to to these churches about 30 years after Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus died, he lived a sinless life. He died on the cross for us. He rose again, and then he ascended into heaven. The early believers might have been thinking, after Jesus ascended into heaven, now what? What are we going to do now? Well, Peter lived alongside Jesus while he was here on earth, and he witnessed his ministry. And he heard Jesus' promise to send the Holy Spirit as a helper. And God kept his promise to send the Holy Spirit. We're going to see how Peter challenged believers to live like Jesus today. Jesus was our ultimate example of how to live our life. And Peter's going to teach us this morning how to do that. So, if you have your Bibles open to 2 Peter chapter 1, I want to read 2 Peter chapter 1 to you. It's only about 20 verses. So we'll read it and then we'll watch our Bible story video this morning. This letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. The faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. 
These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, to make every effort to respond to God's promises, supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence, and moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus. But those who fail to develop in this, in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, I always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth you have been taught. And it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon leave this earthly life. So I will work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I am gone. For we are not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes. When he received honor and glory from God the Father, the voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. We ourselves heard that voice from heaven and when we were with him on the holy mountain. Because of that experience, we have an even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote, for their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and Christ the morning star shines in your hearts. Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture has ever come from a prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. All right, so that's the entire first chapter of Second Peter. Why don't we take a look now at our Bible story video for the week. Peter was one of Jesus' disciples who became a leader in the early church. He wrote two letters in the Bible to help believers who were facing hard times. When Peter wrote his second letter, he was in a Roman prison. He had been arrested because he was a follower of Jesus. Peter wrote, we have everything we need because we know Jesus. When we trust in his righteousness, he gives us power to live for him. He is good and he promises us good things. So this is how we should seek to live. Along with faith, seek these things. Goodness, knowledge, self-control, patience, brotherly affection, and love. When we have these qualities, Jesus will be glorified in our lives. When we remember the good promises God has for us, we can rely on his power to resist temptation. Peter wanted the believers to remember what Jesus had done for them. Jesus did the greatest work by dying on the cross. He has taken away our sins. Because of Jesus, God invites us into his kingdom and gives us eternal life. Peter wrote, God has chosen you and given you his power, so do everything you can to live like Jesus. Peter knew he was going to die soon. So he also wrote, you already know what I'm telling you. I want to keep reminding you as long as I am living so that you will remember even after I'm gone. We did not tell you made up stories. We told you what we saw and heard. Jesus lived a perfect life and died the death we deserve for our sin. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives our sins and changes our hearts. Jesus calls and empowers his followers to live like him. Okay, so I love what Peter says here. 
He is encouraging these, these Christians to keep following the Lord. And as you remember, our key passage is from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And it says this, By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him, the One who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous glory and excellence. So we know Jesus lived a perfect life, and He died the death we deserved for our sins. As Pastor Bill says quite often, Jesus paid the price that he didn't owe, or paid the debt, excuse me. Jesus paid a debt that he didn't owe because we owe a debt that we cannot pay. And if you don't know what that means, it means that Jesus took our spot. Jesus never sinned. He was not deserving of death. All of us have sinned. And instead of having to die, Jesus took his spot, took our spot. Think about that. The, the greatest man to ever walk this earth, who never did anything wrong, sacrificed himself to save us. When we trust Jesus, God forgives our sins and changes our hearts. Jesus calls and empowers his followers to live like him. Peter highlighted God's mercy and grace as he was encouraged, as he encouraged the early believers. When we face hard times, we can remember God's gift of salvation and the eternal hope that we have in him. Even in hardship, God cares for us. That's incredible. I want you all to remember that no matter what is going on in your life, no matter how much you're hurting or you're struggling, God is still in control and God it's going to guide us through. He's going to lead us through. And that's so comforting to know. I know in my life there have been many times when I, you know, I've messed up. And, and I'm like, God, like, please forgive me. And just knowing that God will forgive us, it takes the burden off of my shoulders. Knowing that I'm never too far away for God to save me. I want to watch our questions from kids video today, okay? And I want you guys to think about what Pastor Brian talks about. So let's watch our questions from kids video. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Blake from San Francisco, California asks, want to be like Jesus, but sometimes it's really hard not to have a bad attitude. Can I really change? You know, in today's Bible story, we saw that Peter instructed us as believers to live like Jesus. So your question is really a strong one, a, a really good question. Can we really change, especially when some changes are really hard, like having a bad attitude at times? So can you change? Well, maybe, maybe not. But even if you could, even if you could do something to change your attitude, it probably wouldn't last for long. Those changes are gonna just be short term. The reason is because we all continue to like to sin. Sin pulls at our hearts and in our minds all the time. And so when we're left to ourselves, we're gonna kind of keep drifting back towards sin instead of drifting toward living like Jesus. That's not so great of news, is it? I'm sorry I have to share it with you, but it's the reality that we all experience. But here is the great news, the, the good news, the gospel. It's not up to us to change ourselves. We can change, but we don't do the changing. God is the one who changes us. He wants us to live differently, and he gives us the power to do that through the Holy Spirit. One of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit is to change our minds, to change our hearts, so that we want to live more like God and that we do live more like Him. That is good news, isn't it? So can you change your bad attitude? Not ultimately, but God can and He will. Just let Him work in your life, let Him work in your mind and heart and see what He will do. 
So here's a question back for you all. What ways have you seen God change you already? And in what ways do you still need to change to be like Jesus? All right. So after that video, let's think about some ways that God has changed us in our lives, in our hearts, and let's think of some ways that we still need to work on being closer to God. One of the ways that God has really changed me is I have made it a priority every day to read my Bible. For many years, I would read it here and there, but I was never consistent with it. And I've it's been a priority in my life to read my Bible every single day because I want to grow closer to the Lord. And how do I grow closer to Him? By reading His Word, by praying and talking to Him. It's just like with your friends. You can't get closer to them if you don't talk to them. So reach out to that friend you haven't talked to in a while. Ask them how they're doing. Just check on them. One of the things that God really has changed my heart is is showing me that little things don't matter. Um, Anyone who doesn't know me very well, I love sports. I love basically all sports. And I've been a fan of the Kansas City Chiefs my whole life, which is a professional football team. And I remember, especially in in high school and, and part of college, Man, if the Chiefs were playing bad, I was having a bad day. I was, I was yelling and screaming. And I'll admit, sometimes I still get um, excited or, or angry at the game, but I've, I've learned that that game doesn't matter at the end of the day in my life. And I will say this, and anyone who came to the Super Bowl party last February when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, can attest to the fact that I was pretty anxious that night. I walked up and down the aisles in the sanctuary. I just kept walking. I was excited too, because I'd never got to see my team play for a championship. And uh, yes, you know, I was excited when they won. And I've seen them lose some crazy games, but here's the deal. No matter how much I love football, no matter how much I love the Chiefs, they haven't saved me. Jesus saved me. And ultimately, they're gonna let me down again. And that's, that's just part of life. When we put our hope in something and not someone, as Pastor Ron said last week in his sermon, when we put our hope in something and not someone, we're gonna be disappointed. So here's what I wanna encourage you, as God's been doing this in my life. When you, when you are so obsessed with something that it's taking you away from God, take a step back. Take a step back and and say, okay, God, I need more time with you. Um, And you may not even realize that you're doing it. But when you really sit back and focus and you think, hmm, I could be reading my Bible instead of watching this TV show or, or playing Among Us or whatever it might be. I'm not saying those are bad things. When they get in the way of our relationship with Jesus, they become a God. And we don't want that. The Lord should be our number one priority and then everything else falls into place so as we're talking we've been talking about Lottie Moon and her Christmas offering I want you guys to watch our missions moment video for the week just to see exactly what's happening so here's our missions moment video for the week thank you thank you thank you thank you Thank you so much. For giving. For giving. Thank you for your giving. The Lottie Moon offering. Toward Lottie Moon. Thank you for giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. God uses gifts given to global missions offerings, like the offering named after Lottie Moon, in big ways. Thank you, First Baptist Church of Riverside, California. Because you gave, I am able to access remote areas of Central Asia and explain the gospel with people God is already drawing to Himself. With your help, we are bringing light to the dark places among unreached people groups. Because of what you've given, it allows me to share this gospel with as many Central Asians as I can across London. 
your giving allows our organization to provide need for refugees and to give them hope. Thank you for giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering so that we can buy Bibles in Arabic that we use with our Discovery Bible Study with non-believers. Because of your generosity, African women are hearing stories from God's Word while henna is being drawn on their hands and arms. And because of your giving, the life changes that we see through faith in Jesus Christ, that happens because of your gifts. Thank you so much for giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering. Your giving helps us take care of our health while we work among the deaf in Central Asia. Thank you for giving to the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering and helping to provide this wonderful water filter here in Northern Thailand. Your giving allows me to continue with my medical license here in Ghana, where I can not only do surgeries, but also the patients have the opportunity to hear the gospel. So thank you. Because of your giving, I'm able to speak to these thousand kids every Wednesday morning. Thank you. Thank you, First thank Baptist, Baptist Church. Thank you, Faith Promise Church. Thank you, Cathedral Baptist Church. Thank you for giving to Lati Moon. Thank you, and God bless you. So, Thank You for Giving was the title of that video. There's a song, an old song, called Thank You for Giving to the Lord. And it's by a guy named Ray, Ray or Roar. I can't remember. I always forget. Bolts. Anyway, part of the chorus of that song says, Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. When I think about that, when we give our time and our money and our efforts to the Lord, someone else's heart might be changed and they might accept Jesus because of what we've done. Now we here at Mariners, we sponsor several missionary families. We, we, we help sponsor them, not fully sponsor them on our own. But we don't know when we give to them and they're able to preach the gospel on the other side of the world, who might be accepting of the gospel, who might be there. And that, to me, is one of the most exciting things. And it's, it's crazy, too, because if you're like me, if you give someone money for something, you want to see instantly it change. You want to see instantly what it's doing. And we may never see that. And it's the same when you talk to your friends about Jesus. We may never see we may never see our friends accept Jesus. We might be the second person that, they've, that, we've, that has mentioned Jesus to them, and they're not ready to hear it yet. But 10 years later, the eighth or ninth person who has told them about Jesus, that might be the time when it clicks for them. That might be the time when their heart is soft and they accept Jesus. And here's the cool thing about that, is that we may never know who we helped bring to the Lord, when we're in heaven, though, we'll be able to be there to greet them, knowing that we took that step of faith with what Jesus said. We took that step of faith. We told them about Jesus. And I want you guys to know that it's not our job. God doesn't tell us to convert people to be Christians. He tells us to plant the seed. So when you have that opportunity to share the gospel, do it. And think about this quote. Love everyone, be kind, because you might be the only Bible that someone ever has. You might be the only version of Jesus that someone ever sees. And so, when you think about that, your words matter, your actions matter, what you do in situations matter. Words, especially words, can be so hurtful and they can tear you down, but they can be so helpful and they can build you up. I have some friends who, anytime I need to pick me up, I can call them and they're gonna speak truth to me. Uh, my family is the same way. They always know what to say to me. Uh, and sometimes they, they say stuff and I didn't even know I needed to hear it. I wanna encourage you to be a light and when you use your words, use them to build people up. Don't use them to tear people down. It's so easy to tear people down. 
And I want to I want to challenge you today. And this is something that I'm challenging myself to too, is that when someone makes a mistake, don't automatically go and point out the mistake to them, because it's easy for us to to see someone else's flaws and their faults and point them out. Instead, point out to them, hey, like I loved this. Don't don't point out their faults because they might really be struggling with something. And when you bring that up, it might just make it 10 times worse. But if you see them do a small thing like open a door, say, hey, like, thank you for opening that door for me. Thank you for doing that. Um, and as we're talking about words and we're looking at Peter and and all the things he tells us to do on how to live a godly life, I want you to remember this, our words have power. And when we tear someone down, it's, it's hard. But if you're mad at someone, and if you just want to point out their faults, here's, here's what I want you to do. Instead of being mad and, and pointing out their faults, I want you to pray for them. If someone is upsetting you, I want you to pray for them. And I want you to keep praying for them. Because I can tell you this, it's hard to hate someone. It's hard to be upset with someone when you're praying for them every day. Pray for our friends. Pray for our, our, we may not have enemies, but pray for the people you don't get along with. Remember this, especially this year, as it's been such a tough year. People are struggling. Be the light for them. Share a smile. Do the little things. That's what I want to encourage you guys today to do, to be the light, to, to live out what first, what first Peter, what Peter is telling us in Second Peter chapter 1, that we have the tools to live a godly life. We have the tools to do this. And now the ball's in our court, to use a sports analogy. So go get it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that your word is our greatest tool. And we know that to live uh, a God-fearing, God-honoring life, we need to be in your word every day. And we need to focus on what you have written down in this book. I pray that we would use our words and our actions this week to glorify you and to build people up. Thank you, Lord, so much for loving us. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, the next time I see all of you, it will be 2021. I hope you have a great new year. I hope that if you make a New Year's resolution, it's something that you can do. It's something obtainable that you can focus on. Last year, my, one of my New Year's resolutions was to read through the Bible in a year. And I'm excited to tell you I did it. Did I miss a few days? Yes. Did I get it done? Yes. I want to encourage you, make a plan for this year and, and, and get some people to, to reach out and help you do it. I love you all so much. I hope you had a great Christmas. Enjoy your new year. And let's, let's change the world for the Lord in 2021. I'll see you guys next Sunday.